Hello, everybody. Well, we made it to another weekend. Hope you are well. I'll just get right into it. I believe uh, we're set up here for a perfect storm of pain and uh, possible unrest this summer. Uh, there's just so many red flags, so much going on. Uh, now, if there was just a couple of these things or a few of these things happening, okay, I really wouldn't worry so much about it. But um, I try not to worry anyway that much. But there's so much of it that I just believe that uh, we're in for a lot of, a big bumpy ride this summer, or maybe beyond and beyond that. So we need to hold on tight and be prepared. But uh, just some of the things that I'm thinking about, all these red flags that are going up around us. Um, I mean, you've probably heard about most of these or all of these, but you got the first, the economic crisis that's going on. And the inflation just keeps going up. Uh, the cost of goods and services just keep rising. It seems like it's by the week just keeps going up. Okay. So we've got that. Uh, everything from food to cars to gasoline, uh, you know, just keeps going up and up. All right. Uh, you've got uh, an issue where uh, employers are having trouble finding people on just about every level and just about every industry. Uh, especially hard hit is retail, restaurants, uh, truck drivers. That's a serious thing. Uh, so we've got that going on. We've got these cyber attacks that keep happening. Uh, that's a troubling trend. You know, you know, they've hit the gas. They've hit uh, communications. Um, they've hit uh, this meat packing plant. I mean, what's next? You know, it seems like they're, uh, they're trying out a lot of different things, almost like dry runs, you know. Uh, so... We also have an eviction moratorium that's coming to an end. Looks like by the end of this month, uh, we've got uh, that's and that's an issue. I want to talk a little bit more about that. And then the unemployment uh, bonus benefits uh, looks like they're coming to an end, or at least for the most part, most states. We've got crime waves, uh, an uptick in crime. There's more than an uptick in crime. I mean, it's way up in a lot of places, and not just the big cities. It's your smaller cities too. So I'm going to give some stats on that in a second. Uh, we've got uh, still got a crisis at the southern border. Okay, uh, we've got these droughts. I haven't talked much about this. Some people are tar starting to talk about talk more about this, but these droughts uh, out in the Midwest and West. And the folks out west, you probably know about this. But and then you have fire season coming up. And, I mean, they've got lakes out there like Lake Mead and some of these places that are at historic low levels. I mean, that's serious. Uh, you know, so, and then we got a pandemic that's still, you know, here in the United States uh, seems to be a lot better. I mean, we're most places I know here in Georgia, we're pretty much everything open. We're not wearing masks, uh, but the pandemic seems like it's still raging in some countries, especially uh, I know India still having issues and out in Southeast Asia, Thailand. So with, that's not completely gone. Looks like that's going to be around. So we have to keep that in the back of our minds. Okay. Um, also, I wanted to add also, I wanted a subscriber to the channel here, Mary R. Uh, she made a comment um, on my last video. She made it the comment tonight, earlier tonight, uh, on my last uh, video that uh, she was out running errands today, earlier today, and uh, some of the fast food restaurants uh, close to her town or in her town in Texas were out of chicken. Totally. And one of them was Chick-fil-A. Okay, have you ever heard of Chick-fil-A being out of chicken? And the other one was Whataburger. But I can't get over the, the CFA being out of chicken. I don't think I've ever seen that. So that, <laughs> that's alarming. Uh, we've been talking about a chicken shortage, but man. Uh, and then also she said she noticed that uh, she drove by a Ford dealership and noticed that their parking lot or their park or their lot was almost totally empty and that that just she said that physically startled her to see that and i can imagine you don't see that often and we've been talking about that you know the shortages of the computer chips the conductor um, computer chips that's affecting uh, the um, supply of new vehicles so also some stats i wanted to go over real quick uh, as far as and i was talking about the eviction moratorium uh, more than 11 million Americans are behind on their rent and many could face eviction when the National Housing Protection expires in June. 
uh, over over a hundred thousand over the age of sixty five face eviction. Four hundred over four hundred and fifty thousand between the ages of fifty five and sixty four face eviction. It's a high number. Uh, else? Experts say the number of convictions could skyrocket when the ban lifts. Around fifteen percent of adult renters are not current on their housing payments, according to an analysis by the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities. You see a wave of evictions coming, and that's going to put some people, put a lot of people homeless, uh, some people in the streets. And I believe, and especially with the summer coming up, the heat coming on, I think you're going to have a potential for a lot more unrest. Uh, also, um, the country's massive rental arrears is is as high as seventy billion dollars. That's billion. Talked about a crime wave going on. It seems like everywhere. Every time I turn the internet on, or heaven forbid, the TV, I hear about something—a a multiple shooting somewhere. It's not just in New York or Chicago. It's everywhere, just about. Uh, this uh, article was uh, Albany in Albany, New York. This was from the Washington Post uh, a few days ago. Albany, New York. Eight people have been fatally shot in, in uh, the capital of New York, Albany. Uh, 85, 80 people have been shot. Eight people have been shot, excuse me, um, this year so far, including six in May. Uh, last weekend, at least 12 mass shootings occurred across nine states, killing 11 people and injuring at least 70. Um, Miami. What's going on in Miami? They seem to be in the news a lot about this here lately. Two people were killed and more than 20 injured in the Miami area after men with assault rifles and handguns began shooting indiscriminately into a crowd during a concert early on Sunday. So I think this was last weekend, actually. So uh, uh, Atlanta is close to me. Uh, Atlanta, the homicide rate is up 50% over this time last year. The mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, uh, said she and her police commanders have been struggling to come up with, a conci with concise reasons uh, as they brace for a potentially rough summer. Potentially. Uh, I believe you're about to have one there. Uh, so that's a little bit alarming. Um, not real surprising, but unfortunate. Uh, Wichita, Kansas. Wichita. Uh, city reported uh, 59 homicides in 2020, about one every six days, the highest total since 1993. Police Chief Gordon Ramsey said it's unlike anything I have ever seen. Okay, so these are just some things I read. I've been, been doing a little research on. So, so how do we mitigate this? So. You know, say uh, stay out of the big cities or just watch where you go, plan your routes like we've talked about before. But even in a small city or medium size or anywhere, I think we need to keep vigilant, uh, keep hyper aware of what's going on around you, uh, keep your situational awareness. And you know, we talked about that before. Um, why other as far as other things financially, and you know, I'll just watch every dollar we spend. Um, if we can do something ourselves, DIY it, you know, um, just do that. Uh, need to we keep prepping, keep stocking, keep stopping, stocking up on your foods, um, medicines. Uh, let's not forget that um, your over-the-counter prescriptions. Stock up extra if you can uh, on that as well, and uh, any kind of uh, first aid supplies for sure. Uh, so I need. I think we need to prepare for potential loss of power or even just temporary blackouts. I think uh, depending on where you live, I think there's more of a you know maybe a more risk you know depending on the area of the country too as well for that but anywhere no matter where you live i think we need to prepare for that um i think we need to, to think in terms of uh how can i um what are we going to do if the power goes out for three days a week you know two weeks are we ready for that uh, you know your lighting uh you know how are we going to keep things powered if you have a small generator that helps a lot um so I think we need to just keep thinking of that and keep preparing. Uh, and then also just, uh, you know, live our lives. It's the weekend here. Um, you know, get out and enjoy it as well. 
Um, just try not to worry too, to stress too much over this and, uh, and be kind. Let's extend some grace out there. You know, you're at the grocery store or wherever, uh, the man or woman in front of you may be going through a lot. We don't know what they're going through. You know, the one at the stoplight, red light right next to you, you know, I see a lot of people that look just overwhelmed and stressed no matter where I am, whether it's Walmart, Kroger, on the roads, people just looked, people just look a bit stressed, a bit, a lot stressed. So we don't know what they're going through. It's probably something that's way more than what we're dealing with, you know. So let's extend some grace, um, be kind where we can. I think that helps, starts with us individually. So that's my message there. So, uh, but anyway, I will uh, end it for there. Uh, have a good weekend. Uh, be safe. God bless you. See you soon.